Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best time travel destination! That's right, don't worry everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Great Scott, Hal. <laughs> or I should I say great Hal Scott. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Did I get that backwards? You did at first, but now yeah. you got it right. <laughs> great. Hal you were never Scott. you never we were never a middle name guy. Did you have buddies that went by their middle names? I'm sure I did. I, I never really inquired into it. Look, I don't care that much about other people, Mark. Ultimately, it's all about me. <laughs> I just thought that was odd. Well, because my mom has always been a middle name person. She's always gone by Suzanne, but Suzanne is her middle name. She could not have a more Southern name. Lila Suzanne. Why? She doesn't go by Lila? I didn't realize Suzanne was her middle name, first yeah. of all. Uh, yeah. Uh, why doesn't she go by Lila? She doesn't like it. She just, she just prefers Suzanne, I guess, because it sounds more Southern. <laughs> But that is a thing, though, like, I, Lila's pretty Southern. Lila's pretty Southern. I'm Lila. Lila. Only if you say it with that accent. I heard Lila's going to the cotillion tonight. My goodness, I hope Suzanne isn't there. Doesn't everybody in the South say the name that way? <laughs> Lila. I mean, she's in the South. Anything yeah. becomes Southern. Yeah. But. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. Hey, but. <laughs> How y'all doing, but. How y'all yeah. doing, Isaac? How you doing there, Pierre? <laughs> oh, look, it's Pierre. <laughs> and, mm. Look, here comes Hubert. <laughs> Hubert's, a, Hubert's a big old tick hound. We love Hubert so much. He got jowls. We like to play with him like they're a couple of furry pancakes. <laughs> I named his jowls Winston and Churchill because there's no more southern name for his very southern jowls. I put a cigar on each one and no matter how he turns, you swear you're looking at the old prom minister. When, 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 you, when you see him turn his head, those little strings of saliva make that little V signal on the side like it's like he's holding up his fingers and wiggling them. One time I thought he had swallowed David's tennis shoes. <laughs> and he had. We found that out a week later. But you're not talking about the dog. The actual Winston Churchill is who swallowed them shoes. That's right. We had to we had to wait a week for him to pass them. <laughs> and oh the speech he gave. Oh It was quite a debut. <laughs> Historical figures are fun. <laughs> and that's why uh, you chose this topic. I did. Suggested by Cassandra. Thanks, Cassandra. I always like to pick the topics that are, you know, weird. Um, you do. I, I want to get something out of the way right now. Okay. I, I, because I've thought about this a lot. Are you, are we now. having, a, are we having an intervention right here? Is this, you I could have done where... this just on the phone, buddy. Mark, when you um suggest these topics, it makes me feel like you don't love me anymore. But I do. Oh, I should have done the, you've seen the guy from Intervention, right? Uh, Who no. Who's turned into, it's a guy who's being, his son is, is, the Intervention is for him. And his son is very emotional, obviously. This is the television program, Intervention. This is the television program that was on, I think, A&E. Yes, the exploitive television show on A&E. Yes. And the son goes like, he's we clearly met at his father. He goes, somewhere deep down, I still love you. And then the father cries. But the sound of his crying is like this. He goes, <laughs> so people have auto tuned that <laughs> mercilessly. Oh, I don't, I want to know how they got, how they got a brontosaurus family on that show. It's easy. You just put out a bunch of plants and they'll show up. They, they get hungry like anybody else. Um, yeah, I don't like that auto tuning of that seems exploitive, exploitative or exploitive or whatever. It doesn't it, matter. It is also it seems, hilarious. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just terrible. But I, look, I shouldn't look laugh the, at the it man yet. is the man is feeling his feels. And probably for the first time. We hope he's doing a lot better. We hope he is. I have no idea what happens in that episode. I, like we could be talking about the dead. I don't think we <laughs> are. I'm sure he's fine. Well, we're about to be. They, yeah. We're all going to die one day. Yeah. So what I want to talk about 
is yeah. I, I'm sure this is something I feel like everybody thinks about this, right? You go, mm-hmm. oh, if I could travel back to any time, we all have some particular era in history mm-hmm. that we're we have obsessions with, and those can change over time mm-hmm. as we either learn more about different periods or just our tastes change as people. But I, every time I've thought about going back to say ancient Rome, that seems to be a popular the height of the Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. All I can think of is those people were like savages, and <laughs> it's probably the the dirtiest filthiest place you can i I had a feeling that uh being the uh being the hygiene aficionado that you are that some of these places would be problematic and i think that's one thing we have to take into account um not just hygiene but you know danger factor and uh but you know if, if we if we shelter ourselves too much in this thought experiment yeah then we we might miss out on some real fun okay do you, so how do you want to approach this? Because the the timeline, we've got billions of years. Right. Okay. Here is what I did just to narrow this down a little bit. I went online, as I usually do, and I found a bunch of different websites. I encourage you to find them. They're a lot of fun um, where people sort of throw this thought out there. Yeah. And I found them ranging from a group of students in China who were asked to, you know, just sort of assorted websites by bloggers and whatnot. And basically I just compiled all of the places that appeared most often when people talk about wanting to go back in time to a specific period. I was going to ask. Um, about and that. then we can add our personal favorites, I think. Yeah. But I think the first thing we should do is figure out what is important to us in our travels. But what were you about to say? I didn't mean to I interrupt. was going to say that I think it's, uh, that was an interesting question I had. And I, I'm, I'm glad you went about your research this way mm-hmm. Be- because there's so many because just doing cultures. hey here's all of time well there's there's that but also the the periods of time that we might want to visit as mm-hmm. as americans who are raised in american culture would be different than china or right. different than um middle eastern countries or european countries each of whom have their own sort of rich history right if you're italian certainly the renaissance would be huge the roman empire would be huge you have these amazing points in history what i'm saying is you can get trapped in your in your own culture's history right everybody said i want to go back and see dinosaurs right yeah uh no not a lot of people said i want to go back and see dinosaurs no they're terrifying yeah they're giant terrifying monsters why would you want to go back and be the what's the uh opposite of an apex predator a uh down in the ditch prey (laughs) yeah uh dinner is the opposite of that (laughs) you eat dinner yeah. So yeah, there are, there are, there are people from all over the world and there are, are locations from all over the world in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think that, you know, the, the language barrier might be tough. Sure. In some of these, if we're going back to, uh, ancient Mesopotamia or, uh, you know, the height of the, uh, Aztec empire. Let's make it easier then. Let's assume wherever we go, we have a universal translator on Great. us. So we can so, communicate with, so the ability to communicate is, is not going to stop us from choosing a particular period in time. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and and I think that we can take into account the other details of things like uh you know uh ease of travel and hygiene and all of uh these sort of things that you have to worry about and danger of fights and you know all that stuff. They they they're just things to to think about. They're the you know what they are? They're the part of the travel video where after they show you all of the amazing things you're going to see, they do like a little 30 seconds of like, here's a few things you need to know. Don't go outside at all. You know what I mean? Like where they have to do those little those little blurbs throughout. I watch a lot of Rick Steves. Shout out to Rick Steves. I hope he uh, listens to the show. I think it's also important to note that for the two of us it would mm-hmm. probably be easier to travel, maybe even easier for you to travel within time than it would be for me. Because I have that time machine? Well, because you have the time machine. I don't know how you got that, by the way. Yeah. Did you get it from Wish? Is that the same yeah. place you got the thing that well, look, your phone while you brush your teeth? Exactly. Wish has that aggressive algorithm that if you type just the word time, it's just going to be like, you want this time machine? You want this time machine? Ding. Email. Hey, you want this time machine? Like, no, shut up, Wish. <laughs> I'm just surprised it works. Uh, I was going to say it's e- it would be easier for the two of us as white men to travel anywhere in time that we want. That is very true. So there are some surprising spots in here, though, that are way better than you would think that all of history had been. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. Um, so, so do you want to give, 
Do you want to start with personal or do you want to start with the, the list you've compiled? Um, let's, you know what? Let's put our personal ones on there because I'm going to, I'm not going to lie. My personal ones were already on this list. Oh, let me see if I can guess. Okay. One of yours might be. What now is it contingent upon meeting specific people? So good question. That was, there are two different ways we can approach this. Mm -hmm. And I think we could maybe even divide it into two categories if you like. Okay. One is if we are going to see a place. Mm-hmm. And the other is if we are going to answer a question. I see. Whether that question is, what was Jesus really like? Or mm-hmm. if the question is, uh, you know, what really happened on the grassy knoll in 1963 in Texas? So th- I don't know that there, there are some of these places that can be that you would may want to visit just to answer the question. Like, I'd want to go to the moon in 1969 to see if we really did get there. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. We did stop that, which we did, of course. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> uh, some 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 experts say, you know, I don't know. I don't want to get pu- I don't want to get punched by Buzz Aldrin. You might get punched by me. I'm oh, gonna go man. to your house. What? I'll find you. How dare I'll give you. you a bop on the nose. By the time this airs, I will be in Canada. I'll find you. Don't worry. I like I can't cross borders. No, Canada. you can't. No. Damn it. No, you're not allowed. Oh, man. Yeah, they don't let Philadelphians cross the border because you'll throw batteries at Justin Trudeau. Yeah, I have one of those collars on that if I try to go near the border, <laughs> invisible fence activates. And it, it just hurts. It zaps you with maple juice. Yeah, maple juice. You mm-hmm. mean syrup? No, no, no. I mean maple electricity. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. I smell like uh, maple bacon afterwards. Yeah. There's got to be a Canadian band called the Maple Electrics, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. If not, you could start one while you're there. Uh, okay. I, is one of yours America during the Revolutionary War or during the Continental Congress? Ah, uh, you know what? I didn't think to put that on my list, but I think everything you're going to pitch, I'm going to be like, oh, that's on my list too. Was, was that one of them? No, it wasn't. Okay. But I'm adding, I'm not going to put the Continental Congress. I'm going to put the, uh, no, you know what? I will put the Continental Congress. I was going to say the, the creation of the Constitution, but that seems way more boring. Oh, the, yes, the, well, yeah, I mean, that is the Continental Congress. No, no, no. The Continental Congress was the group t- that formed and had Thomas Jefferson write the Declaration of Independence right. in 1787 was when they had the, um, the, the Constitution. Constitutional Convention. Yeah. Con- that's what I After the war. Convention. Yeah. Mix them up. My mistake. All right. So what is, uh, what do you have a few? How many do you have? Three? I have, well, I have, I, mine are on the list, oddly. Okay. Oh, so you don't yeah. have anything that is not. I don't have anything that isn't on this list. Okay. I'll, I did, I did add, I did add one to the list. Okay. What's that? That is the Library of Alexandria. Okay. Uh, because in the Library of Alexandria was, uh, it was during the time of Alexander and he was, Super into amassing knowledge and his capital city was Alexandria and it was this beautiful, like rivals any of the great cities of today. Uh, it was, it, uh, it was a coastal town. It had the world's most impressive library and, uh, it is where Archimedes did all of his science work and a bunch of other great scientists. Uh, it's where the, the steam engine was actually invented for the first time in that, in the library of Alexandria. That is one that is a combination of the two for me. It's a combination of just an amazing place to visit and a time to be there. What was it around 300, mm-hmm. 300 AD when Alexander was, yeah, between two, like between two seven, 260 and 275 AD. That was like a big uh, period for them. So, uh, so I would like to just go and see the beautiful city and the beaches, but also I think it would be amazing to go into the library of Alexandria and, uh, and see, you know, a lot of the, the, the great brilliant, uh, the great brilliant scientific minds at work. Okay. So that's one of mine. What about you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in certainly the world history, but I have a, I have sort of an obsession with the 1960s and to be able to visit it. As an adult, just be, just because I, the extent to which the world has changed in the last 50 to now almost 60 years. Where in the 1960s would you like to go? I'm interested in the early 60s, but I'm also interested in the late 60s. So that's a win. I, I'd say one time 1962, the other time probably 1968. And where would you go? 
1962, I'd probably want to visit New York City. Okay. Uh, 1968, I'd probably visit Los Angeles. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, 1962, New York, that would have been, that would have been folk music and yes. groovy people living in the Chelsea Hotel. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know what was going on in LA. But in also, a lot of like, uh, Mrs. Maisel, which I think is in 1906, said it, I think mm-hmm. in the year 1960 by now. I have a feeling a lot of the ones that we pick are going to be based on movies and TV shows that we love. Well, I just, I think the, the early 60s, we were still, we hadn't yet had the revolution. The Beatles hadn't come to America yet to, to start that, the sort of British invasion. Mm-hmm. Um, we were in sort of a significant peacetime. Although we had just had the, uh, what the Bay of Pigs had happened in what, 61? Uh, yeah. So we're, we're in this like sort of tenuous peacetime, but it's the Camelot era of the White House. And we're transitioning. It's a, just a period of cultural transition, at least in America. We're not yet where we're going to be by the end of the sixties, but we are slowly evolving from where we were in the fifties. And that to me is, is fascinating. I like that. And then 1968, we're in the, the middle of, you know, the summer of love has already happened. We're, we're getting involved. You know, Vietnam is sort of in full swing. There's a full cultural revolution happening. And it'd be interesting to sort of see that with a pair of 2019 eyes. Yeah. And in Los Angeles, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because you had like in Chicago, you had the, there was a lot. I mean, 68 is one of those years that's just everything happened yeah you had the chicago in, seven the, 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 yeah yeah you had you had the walkouts in los angeles specifically you had the uh you had the east la walkouts the mexican-american students at garfield high walked out yeah it was just a time of a lot going on see that's one of those to me that seems like the danger factor would be very high but also the excitement of being part of a world changing and I and idealistically trying to make it a better place. Yeah, I mean it, it is a war. It's also the year we lost Bobby Kennedy and Martin Luther King Jr. I'd yeah. love to be there before either of those happen, so it would have to be <laughs> before April. Be, uh, yeah, it would have to be pre-April. Yeah, that <laughs> it is. It does seem like a dark time. You're like, oh man, you know what year sounds great? The year with all of the explosions and bombs and the Tet Offensive and the protests and uh, the year that everybody rioted in Chicago and we lost King and Kennedy. It's also the Black Power salute at the Olympics. Yeah, like, a lot of important things happen then. It's I just it's a it's a huge cultural tipping point that happened, you know, within the lifetime of people that we know. Yeah. It's not that far out of reach. And I'm always interested in the extent to which you, even watching, watching a show like Mad Men mm-hmm. and seeing things like, Oh, I remember furniture in that style, which was already getting outdated. It was already yeah. kind of outdated by the early eighties when I was seeing it, but that those things were, were still a part of our lives and where we are now, you know, in our life, in our lifetime, technology is we're in a industrial boom of technology in terms of how how far it's come along. You know, the personal home computer happened in our lifetime. It was introduced in our lifetime. The mobile phone, the, the widespread of the internet, satellite and cable television and the expansion of entertainment. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that's happened and it's so different and yet so similar to life now. That's something that interests me. I like that. Well, you know what? Then 1962 New York and 1968 Los Angeles are getting added to this master list of great places to visit. All right. Uh, which has, it looks like f- now 14 things on the okay, list. Do you want to, do you want to read the list off and then we can decide if there are some that we can just get rid of right away? Sure. Yeah. That sounds good. And I'm, I'm going to try and on the fly do this in, you know what? No, I'm not. That's going to be hard to do with my brain this morning. <laughs> okay. uh, I was going to say, I was going to try to make it chronological. Um, <clears throat> but this is scoured from multiple sources on the internet. Yeah. Uh, uh, including, uh, my favorite is this classroom of, uh, Chinese teenagers that did it because some of them are like, well, oh, you do not understand how science works. Kid that wants to go to the birth of the earth, <laughs> which is one of them. Let's start with that. The birth of the earth. I've got the ones that we just put 62, New York, 68, Los Angeles, the continental Congress in 1776, the library of Alexandria around 300 AD, 200 to 300 AD, or maybe it was one. I'm trying to, I don't, I need to look at the timeline of that a little better, but it was around, it was the time of Alexander. Also at the time of Alexander, 
just down the street, Cleopatra's Egypt. Now, this is already thousands of years after the height of the early Egyptian empire. We have ancient Rome at the height of the empire, the wild west of the United States. Sure. Florence during the Renaissance, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon in 600 BC, 1920s New York and the Harlem Renaissance, 1920s Paris and all of the scenes from Midnight in Paris. So 1920s in general. And I'm just going to write. I'm gonna write. Yeah, but I want to put, I, I think we have to specify though that it's two different things because the Harlem Renaissance is very different that, you know what I mean? Like, like mm-hmm. Langston Hughes writing in New York was having a different experience than Ernest Hemingway writing in Paris. Right. Then uh, Tenochtitlan, the uh, ancient uh, Mesoamerican city, the capital of the non-Western influenced world, birth of the earth, age of the dinosaurs. And then uh, two exhibitions, the London exhibition of 1871 and the World Columbian exhibition in Chicago in 1892. Both of those were where all of the great minds of the early and then late Victorian eras came to you know, get uh, shown off to the world. Okay. 1892 had, uh, you know, Edison and Tesla and uh, 1871 had, who was in the 1871 one? It was a bunch of legends. We'll, we'll get there. Um, but are there any that you think we can eliminate right off the bat? Uh, dinosaurs. We already said that one. Yeah. Dinosaurs. Come on. That would be dangerous. It'd be cool, but it'd be dangerous. And birth of the earth. We would not last literally one second. Yes. There was no atmosphere. We would have been sucked into some sort of space thing. I'm going to make the ones that we eliminate bold. No. Oh, or you, do you have a, uh, do you have a, I type you down. love, you I love your Google, uh, Google Docs. No, I'm just in a note. I'm just in a note this time. I'm going lo-fi. Oh, look at that. I don't know how interested I am in the Library of Alexandria. Oh. I'm sure it's nice. It was one of the great cities of all time. How much time do you think you could spend there before you would? I mean, a lot of these places, how much time do you think you would spend there before you got bored? Um, before you go, all right, I get it. I think, I think if you and I went together, you would get bored at the Library of Alexandria a heck of a lot faster than I would. Really? You'd read all the books? What would you do? I would, I would bother Archimedes and I would want to see that early steam engine that they thought was just a, that they thought was just a little novelty, not realizing that they had basically invented the industrial revolution. Uh, 1500 years before the industrial revolution right but i can see how that is a bit of a fringe choice um i would also eliminate because i feel like it's the a lot of people say they would want to go just to see this Mm -hmm. but i think outside of seeing this one particular thing which is the hanging gardens i'm not sure babylon in 600 bc is going to be our winner right but the hanging gardens would be a cool thing to see Sure. So we can eliminate those two. I'm going to eliminate the Continental Congress. Because you don't want to watch a bunch of guys in powdered wigs arguing while they sweat? Yeah, because that was the grossest summer that your home city ever saw. Uh, Yeah, it was just just the, like the whole place just smelled like rancid meat and rum, which, to be fair, is what the inside year. of my body smells like yeah, frequently. Exactly. You're, it's like you're a walking Continental Congress. <laughs> That's right. I'm full of ideas and also booze and meat that I had yesterday. <laughs> um, I'm sorry about your uh, Phillies having a rough season, buddy. I didn't mean to. Um, I didn't mean to talk over that. I know it's. We don't want to give short shrift to the Phillies. <laughs> they gave short shrift to themselves. Oh, they oh, oh! There themselves. were two that I forgot to put on here. Yes, go ahead. I talk about these the kids being awesome, and uh, and then I forget to. I forget to deal with it. Uh, the Tang Dynasty of China six was from 618 to 907. That's common era. That is common era. Yeah. And it was, it was a, a time of great prosperity mm-hmm. where women were, uh, also treated, uh, equally to men and, and was, uh, the home of a very famous, uh, hold on. Give me one second. A very famous empress named Wu Zetian. Okay. So. Um, uh, you know, power, power to Wu Zetian. I'm going to be honest. I don't know a ton about this location and this time period, but I did not want to give, I mean, I'm giving short shrift to, and I apologize, but I, uh, I didn't want to give no shrift to, to that, uh, to the Tang dynasty. Also, how do you pronounce this? Q I N G. Shing. Shing. Okay. 
uh, the Xing Dynasty, specifically Hong Kong during the Xing Dynasty, which was just this amazing bustling, uh, which it still is, but this was the birth of it as a, a, a big, beautiful, bustling port city with the junks that are still the boats that they use down there now. The empire started in 1636 and lasted all the way until 1911 when the Republic was founded. Right. But yeah, it's, uh, it's just a, a, a giant epic era in Chinese history marked by Hong Kong being at the height. Right. So both of those sound awesome. Absolutely. Again, I don't know enough about them. So with apologies, they might not make it to the very end where we know a little more about the time periods. Right. Right. What's, uh, what's on your mind? What are you thinking? Is there anything, are any of these jumping out to you? I, I don't think the Wild West is as great as we think it is. I think it, that, we benefit from from it being all of these are romanticized by media. Yes, very much. The media we've ingested, whether you think it's going to be like Deadwood or whether you think it's going to be like Tombstone or or Gunsmoke or whatever whatever your your chosen Wild West ideas. I I don't know that it was necessarily that great or if it was a place you really wanted to be. I think that I think we find it fascinating from a wow people live that way versus i really want to live that way right <laughs> like and part of part of the thing is uh how much stuff would you have to pack for this yeah. trip and what would you have to pack and this is a destination where it's like well sunscreen bug spray and a loaded gun does not sound like my packing list for the best trip ever yeah plus there's a ton of disease running rampant which mm-hmm. i guess there are during a lot of these but it's not like the cleanest. It's like a filthy, yeah, gross, gun-filled <laughs> petting zoo. But you can't <laughs> pet the animals. I'll say this: trample uh, zoo. It's a trample zoo. Sure. Uh, if I were going to the old west, there's only really one place in the old west that I would like to visit. Yeah, and that is a uh, that is a boomtown saloon. Okay. Like just one of those little frontier, like put it up in a week towns. Yeah. And the saloon always seems like a fun place. Sure. You know, I just want to walk through those swingy doors. But again, that's very just the Hollywood romanticized version of it. And you want the piano player to stop. The, everything stops when you walk through the door. And, but then starts immediately when they go. Yeah, he's OK. Yeah. Go right back to. Play. Yeah. Uh, foster music. But you're right, though. We have romanticized it. And the last thing we want to do in our episode about time traveling to various locations is make it unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> I just think your experience there would be, you have to sort of base it on what was actually happening there versus, yeah. versus what you've seen in movies, right? Yeah. All right. Then you know what? If, if, to make, to equalize all things. Yeah. And then to maybe add a little bit of movie element to it. Mm. Do you think that we ought to add to the end of this best location to time travel with the Muppets? Sure. Because <laughs> that seems like the version of the Wild West in a Muppet movie would be gritty and hilarious and romanticized. How about we come up with our answer and then we decide whether it would be good to travel there with the Muppets? All right. We can imagine what it might be. And like. which Muppets? Well, we'll pick Because Animal, I do not want to go to the World Columbia Exposition of 1892 with Animal. He might break light bulbs. He might. He'd yeah. probably try to eat one. <laughs> eat light. Eat light. <laughs> or he'd drum on them. Yeah. Eat light. <laughs> uh, so, okay, what, what have we eliminated so far? I have the Birth of the Earth, I have the Continental Congress, the Wild West, Babylon, Dinosaurs. Is uh, anything wait, I've missed? With apologies, I'm going to eliminate um, the uh, the Tang Dynasty and the uh, Sh- uh, Xing Dynasty just because I do not know enough about them to uh to say with any certainty and i also have a feeling that i think i have finalists in mind let's get to our finalists before we take a break and then we'll really we'll really use that time to to break it down okay but that uh, that said i think oh yeah i don't know i i'm look i'm looking at this list right now and i would say if we if we were taking three to the finals Mm -hmm. Because there are some amazing things on here, like the exposition in 1892 and the exhibition in 1871. They're these landmark, huge, like beautiful, like the style was cool. You've seen my apartment. You know, I love that, like turn of the century style. I like it. too. Um, Yeah. 
so so like the style i think is very cool and the number of people in one place where you could take in all of this uh information and this this world and this vibe is cool mm-hmm. but i think that there might be better opportunities to do that in a more exotic way so knowing full well that florence during the renaissance and ancient rome at the height of the empire and new and Paris in the twenties are all on this list. Mm-hmm. I think we can spend enough time meeting cool thinkers that we can eliminate those two expositions. Yep, I agree. So right now, the ones I have left. So I, I think uh, ancient Rome and Florence during the Renaissance both go to the finals. Those are those are more there. Those are finalists. Nineteen twenties Paris and Harlem. Those are so the this is what we have left. And maybe we, so maybe we do three finalists. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we've got 1920s Paris, 1920s Harlem, 1962 New York, 1968 LA, the Library of Alexandria, Cleopatra's Egypt, the capital of non-Western influences, the name of which I don't know. Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan. <laughs> what? I Didn't know, I say I think... it how you said it? Yeah, something like that. Like the town drunk? Yeah. Do you know where you want to go? You got to go to Tenochtitlan. All right, Did here's. You go there? Did you ever go? Have you ever? Did you ever go there, Mark? Did you ever go to Sinister Salon? <laughs> Let me tell you something about it. Let me tell you, just real quick, real quick. Hal, 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 put the martini glass down. No, I Hal. know. Hold, hold on. I'll put it down when I'm done with it. Yeah. Well, what about the other one in your other hand? Well, that one I'll put down when I'm done with this one. Okay. And then I'll do that one, and then I'll be done with that. Sinister Salon. <laughs> hold up, Sinister. <sighs> Oh, and then we lost Hal. Um, Genosis is the places where you want to go if you just... It sounds like you're falling asleep during your own book report. You just want to meet people. <laughs> you just... If... If... if you just, I'm fine, mother. If you just want to meet people. Okay, okay. You're done with the martinis. I'm taking those from you. Oh. Uh, excuse me. Aztecs, Aztecs, take his heart. Oh no, I need that for beating. No, put him up on that pedestal. Let's take oh. his heart out. Also, we, we might want to eliminate Tenochtitlan, uh, because, uh, you, if you lose a, if you lose a game of soccer there, you get your heart cut out. Yeah. 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 I don't want my skull turned into a basketball or whatever. <laughs> Not interested. <laughs> Not interested. I, like, I don't need to see it. I know it happened. Look, there was a lot more to that amazing city. It was yes. the giant capital. Uh, I encourage everyone to look it up and check out what Tenochtitlan was, or as my father called it when I was a kid and we were learning about it in school and he was helping me with my homework and he first looked at that word, not realizing how to immediately pronounce Tenochtitlan. He called it tectonic titty land. So <laughs> and he still does. And he, you know what? Knowing my dad, he still does. Of course he does. All right. So we've got our two that are automatics to the finals. Uh, we've got Cleopatra's Egypt, 1920s Paris, 1920s Harlem, 1962 New York, 1968 New York. I'm going to say my pitch is 1920s New York City. Okay. Because I really want 1920s Paris, but I think that's just because I love the movie Midnight in Paris so much. Sure. And it's beautiful. It's a very good, uh, very enjoyable movie. Um, but 1920s New York specifically showed up on every list that I found online. Yeah, I mean it's the it's the I assume we're talking pre depression. Uh, yes, we are talking so pre depression. The stock market crash. Twenty nine is the stock market crash. Weirdly, though, well, we can talk about this in a bit. Uh, do, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I, those I think three it's being another are... very interesting cultural. Like, there is a freedom to that time, but also mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of strictly buttoned up stuff. We're we're just beyond the disaster of the Titanic. Mm-hmm. Which kind of shakes up the class structure, both in in London or England, rather, and also in the U.S. This idea of of uh, of class sort of comes into question, and uh, we're in a post war era because World War One has ended. So yeah. I think it's a fascinating it's a fascinating time. Electricity is like a big deal. Yeah, um, the music is great. The Harlem Renaissance is happening there, so it sort of meets that. The Algonquin Roundtable is meeting mm-hmm. at that time. So there are interesting people to meet. So let's keep that one on the list. Yeah. Kudos to everyone else. And also shout out to the ones that didn't, that didn't quite make it all the way through the list. That is, of course, places like, uh, you know, the age of chivalry. Like we didn't even talk about 
you know, I, I guess that's the whole, you know, we could talk about the entire history of the world if that was the case. But yeah, this feels like such a huge topic that I'm glad we narrowed it down. And I think we did pretty well. And I think we're going to wind up with the uh, with the correct winner. Yeah, I was surprised, actually, that one of yours wasn't going to meet William Shakespeare and going to see an original production of one of his. Yeah, books. see, the, oh, man. And now so, I'm dang it. 17th century. Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth in England. How did yeah. how did that not? Ah, well, now I want to put it on the list. See, this is the problem. Well, we're not. It's not going to be a finalist. I know, but I'm putting it on the list right now and then eliminating it. Yeah. Goodbye. So tell you what. While you're while you're doing that, yeah, we're gonna time travel to an era where all you did during this time was hear about other podcasts on Maximum Fun, and then you'll reset your. I assume we're time traveling like the Avengers in Endgame. You're gonna set your watch, your suit will engage, mm-hmm. and you will travel uh, to the other side of this podcast where we will decide between the finalists. There we go. Enjoy the quantum realm. We'll see you in a second. Bo. Oh! Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. Hello, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is wonderful. It's a podcast that we do as uh, we ma- we are married. And how's the ad going so far? Because I think it's going very good. <laughs> we talk about things we like every week on Wednesdays. One time Rachel talked about pumpernickel bread. It was so tight. You cannot afford to miss her talking about this sweet brown bread. We also talk about music and poems and, you know, weather. There is one... The weather? <laughs> one time Rachel talked about Baby Beluga, the song, for like 14 minutes. And it just really blew my hair back. <laughs> so check us out on MaximumFun.org It's a cool podcast with chill vibes Amber is the color of our energy Is what all the iTunes reviews say <laughs> They will now Hey everybody, this is J. Keith Van Stratton Host of Go Fact Yourself A live game show here in the Maximum Fun Network On Go Fact Yourself, we take the smartest people we know And make them look dumb Oh, by the way, how much do you know about chicken husbandry? You gotta give them that grain <laughs> All right. You gotta give him that grain. And then smart again. What future Hall of Fame pitcher for the Cleveland Indians became the first active player to enlist? Bob Feller. When- oh, okay. <laughs> We've got me, co host Helen Hong, plus celebrity guests and actual surprise experts. All right, we have an expert on hand who can tell us for sure. Is Helen- it Alan Avey? Helen, who do we have tonight? Alan Havey! Alan Havey! In the coming weeks, you can hear guests like Maria Bamford, Tom Bergeron, Paul F. Tompkins, Janet Varney, and Grant Imahara. Check us out on the first and third Friday of every month here on the Maximum Fun Network. And we're back. All right. So here is what we are with with apologies to all of the great periods in the history of the world no that we are not apologies. visiting. You get nothing. Um, here is what we are looking at. We are looking at New York City in the 1920s. We are looking at uh, ancient Rome at the height of the empire. And we are looking at Florence during the Renaissance. First thoughts, Hal Loveland. I, the Renaissance, I think, is a very interesting period of time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 15th century Florence, I see, is what we're talking about. So you could visit. Um, wasn't, is that where Leonardo da Vinci was? Uh, that is where Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci was da living. Da Vinci-o. Da Vinci-o. Hey, da Vinci-o. What's going on? <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci is there doing his work. Uh, Art, science, it's a weird sort of confluence of all these things. Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in it. It's probably the era I know, it's probably the era I, I studied the least or remember the least about studying. Mm-hmm. So th- that is a particular interest to me. Probably the, the one that I, that I like the most out of these is 1920s New York, just because it's a place I've been before or I've been many times and to see what it was like. Hundred years ago, yeah, almost. See that you know what's fascinating to me. It's funny. I was gonna, I was gonna mention that, and I was gonna put that as a, put that as one in the negative column for New York in the 1920s, and partly also Florence during the Renaissance, really, because well, because Florence, like the Domo, is still there. It is the David is still there, although housed in a much nicer museum. Um, the uh, Palazzo Vecchio is still there, like. There's something that jumps out to me about ancient Rome because it's not it, like if we're going to travel in time, I want everything to be so vastly different. You know what I mean? You, like you, if you went to, to if you went to New York in the 19, I do. I want it to be, I want it to be the, the beauty of the time travel element of it. Like 
there are buildings from 1920s New York, a lot of them. And I love New York. It's, it's my favorite place in the world. But there are buildings there. The buildings that were there in the 1920s, most of them are still there and you can see them now. You know what I mean? So I don't, I think that little flavors that looked a little different, while it would be neat to go, you know, go and see some of the great jazz performers in a speakeasy, um, a lot of that stuff still exists. Like there were cars then. It was, it was a mostly modern sensibility or the birth of a modern sensibility in a lot of ways. But to me, like visiting ancient Rome, that jumps out to me because that is, that is a world that we lost for a thousand years. When Rome fell, the dark ages happened and we didn't get that knowledge back, you know, until we found it from thanks to, uh, thanks to Muslim scholars who kept what they could of it and put it in Alexandria in the library. Mm-hmm. Like we did not, there's nothing like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, similar to you, I've visited some of the footprints that it's left behind. I mean, mm-hmm. I didn't play baseball in front of the Coliseum, but. Well, look, this I is not, to, this is not about my personal affection for Rome. This no. is about the, the imaginative, like, I feel like I would have to imagine more of what ancient Rome looked like than I do of what 1920s New York looked like. But anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt, please. No, no, it, it makes sense. I mean, I've been to, uh, I've been to uh, Rome. I've been to Florence. I've been to Venice where, you know, you get a lot more of Renaissance in those areas than you do the Roman Empire. But I've also been to Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Where there are some pieces of it still there, like you can see its influence sort of around the world. It's mm-hmm. still there because they held an incredible amount of land and their culture was spread pretty far and wide. Mm-hmm. So there's, there's something to that. It would be sort of interesting to see it. I, I agree with that. However, I love the idea of going to Times Square. Mm-hmm. And it looking nothing like the Times Square that I visit now. No, no Elmos. Like yeah. there are a lot of the original theaters in place. Uh, everything is everything is different. Everything's the same, but everything is completely different. Think well. Think about this, and that I like. I I look. I like that too. You know, I love New York. But yeah. think about think about uh going to like you just said, going to Times Square, and it looks completely different in the twenties than it does now. Now, amp up that notion, you know, crank that amp to 11 Mm -hmm. and you get go to the Roman forum and it looks completely different than it looks now. You know, right now it's gray ruins. Right. uh, And beautiful sculptures and columns. But back in the day when I mean, it everything was painted. Like, imagine all of these great old ancient columned buildings but painted bright colors. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, there's, I, there's something interesting there. By the way, they, they had, it, pl- they had plumbing. If you were in 1920s New York, you would not have one of the most iconic buildings in all of New York, the Empire State Building, which wasn't built until, thir- until 1930. That's true. And Ground broke in 29. Going. Yeah. So it, you know, it's, it is different than you think it was. I think it, you take for, there are a lot of buildings that were still there, but also we were in a transition from where it was at the turn of the 20th century mm-hmm. into, into what it would eventually become. So it is a yeah. period of, again, it's a period of cultural transition. And all of these are the, 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 the era of the Roman Empire, which is a little bit, a, a lot more than just a, a, a 10 year span. Right. It's 1500 years, but the height of it was right in the middle. Yeah. Represents, you know, the aqueducts and systems of government, like things that we, a lot of things that we still use that were put into practice then, a lot of things that weren't, like places where we all go to throw up together and then take baths. <laughs> well, maybe some of that's still happening. I don't yeah. know your life. Yeah. You've, you've, you've been to some of the clubs in Hollywood. But the Renaissance as well, if you like vibrant colors and things you haven't seen. To, oh, the know, Domo see. still looks like crazy, gorgeous, and intricate. and yeah, Right. Yeah. But I think the fact that some of those buildings still stand is more of a testament to the era that they came from rather than a reason not to visit, right? Like the Colosseum is mostly there. Yes. It's still, it's still in Rome. It's still a centerpiece. People still visit it. It's yes, not but it's, what it was when it was when right. it existed. And I, I get that. But there are still structures that exist from the Roman Empire. So to say, like, well, you know, there's less of it around 
So that makes it more intriguing. Like you just don't know everything. That, uh, I, the Domo is interesting. I like those big pieces, but I'm also very interested in what day to day life was like. Yeah. I would, I would a hundred percent agree with that. And I, I'm interested to see like, what is your life like in, during the Renaissance? Yeah. What is, what is it? What is your normal schedule like? When do you, yeah. And like, to, and, and for yourself versus working versus any, like to go and observe that to me is more. The the closer we get to current day, the more interested I am, sort of in what in what that routine is like. How did we get from where we were at those points to where we are now? Look, what I am are like I am perfectly comfortable with uh, with Florence in the Renaissance coming <laughs> pulling a come from behind victory here because you uh, had more seemed to show more interest in 1920s New York at this end of the timeline. I seem more interested in ancient Rome at this end of the timeline. And it seems like the best of both worlds right. would be to visit the Renaissance smack dab in the middle of the time. Well, not smack dab in the middle, I guess for, you know, uh, no, maybe smack dab a little, little closer to modern times than ancient Rome. But um, yeah, it feels like Florence during the Renaissance, uh, because there's the opportunity to see Michelangelo at work, to see Leonardo da Vinci at work. And just the, the, and, and this is nothing, I'm not knocking religion in any way, but, uh, the rise of, uh, secular, uh, scientific, uh, thought pursuits. Right. Seems like a fascinating, fascinating thing to me. Not that they were doing that in both of these other time periods, but look, I'm just happy that two of these are Italian. Exactly. Well, I mean, it's, that's one of the cultural centers of the world because, of, right. because of the Roman Empire. Um, quick, I'm going to ask a quick sidebar question and then we can sure. just, just as a, as a little, you know, veer away for a second, then we'll come back to our question. Would, would you, what would you bring with you to blow people's minds? Like we're time traveling. Do you bring your iPhone? Right. Be tough. Like, I don't know if, how many of your apps would work, but what, well, what thing, what thing that you could bring would blow minds? Like maybe a movie projector. Yeah. With a, with a film in it. An iPad would blow minds because you could have media stored on it so they could <laughs> see moving pictures. That's true. You can draw on it so it can be used to create art. Oh man. If you it's gave got a calculator, it's got scientific, like there are things that would work without, there are things you could download on it that would work without. Yeah. Without any, you would obviously have no connection to, unless we want to say you have connection. Somehow these things can connect across space time. <laughs> and right. Function. Yeah. You know that old, that new space time wifi that Spectrum came out with? Yeah. It's so expensive right now, yeah. but it'll probably drop in six months. Yeah. Exactly. Wait, you have to wait those stuff, those things out. Oh my God. For sure. That's what I would bring. What would you bring? I don't think you can beat an iPad. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. Like, there's something magical to me right now. And, and I think we may have found the right answer. Mm-hmm. And that is, tell me what you think. It's a bit roundabout the way we got there. I think the correct answer is to go to Florence during the Renaissance, hand Leonardo da Vinci an iPad and see what he does with it. <laughs> People of the world. <laughs> When you visit late 15th century Florence, it's got to be late 15th century, right? Because we're sure. looking to meet Leonardo da Vinci. Specifically, we want to hang out with him. Yeah. And he would have been in his 40s in the, in the, le- in the last decade. He was born in 1452. So he was born right in the middle of the 15th century. So we want late 15th century Florence, Italy during the Renaissance. Give him an iPad and watch him play homescapes. <laughs> How quickly. <laughs> Or guard, how quickly will he be like, no, I've got to help this. I got to help this butler out. I have to, uh, uh he's throwing a party for his mother. Oh, look and at him and his suspenders and bow tie. He's such a nice yeah. butler. I have so many questions about this game. What, how do a family with a butler, father, butler, son, they live in like a mansion and they don't see him to ever have to work. And yet somehow their son is their butler and he uh, does all the clean. Anyway, oh, I got to clear out these, uh, there's a blue piggy banks. But in order to clear out the blue piggy banks, I'm going to have to line up all of these vegetables three by three until they disappear. That's all right. Hey, look, a disco ball. I hit it. Everything <laughs> go. <laughs> I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish this, uh, this uh, painting later. I got to do this right now. Oh, man. Uh, he would Lisa, get. You come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and hey, 
Why not smile for me, beautiful? See, he was a scumbag. We I didn't only, know that until I only, just now. I only smile at this much. Oh, that's yeah. fine. I paint do, you th- do you think that's what the Mona Lisa smile was? The Mona Lisa smile is a reaction to Da Vinci going, hey, girl, just smile. Yeah. She's oh. giving the middle finger yeah. underneath <laughs> the hand that's covered. It's the second best gesture. Out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but yeah, people of the world, the, to visit the Renaissance, like crazy outfits. Mm-hmm. Uh, an age of – one of many ages of science and reason and mm-hmm. also artistic explosion, but also oddly sort of buttoned up, like still a foreign enough society and culture that it would be a shock to be there and to sort of see how it functions. But another important tipping point in history where a lot of things that were created then either influenced later inventions or works of art that have stood the test of time have come out of the Renaissance and why not be in Florence? The number one time travel destination asked and answered. And don't forget to bring your iPad. Now, quickly, yeah. before we <laughs> tell people where they can send us topics, and thank you, Cassandra, for this one. Thank you, Cassandra. You can bring two Muppets with you. Oh. Renaissance. Yes. Who do you um, bring? I would bring Beaker. Uh huh. And instead of, do- I know it would un- upset Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, but I would sure. bring, I would bring Beaker and have him be lab assistant to Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. I almost uh-huh. said Leonardo DiCaprio. He could be lab assistant to Leonardo DiCaprio too. Yeah. Um, who would be your first one while I think of a second? I, I kind of think, I, I know he's dresses in more, um, Elizabethan type dress because of his, his collar ruffle, but I feel like mm-hmm. New Zealand would kind of fit in in the Renaissance. <laughs> With his Just throwing his fish. boomerang fish. Sure. Um, I would also like to, because I have seen many of, and I guess I'm just stuck on Da Vinci now. Um, mm-hmm. st- I've seen many of Da Vinci's drawings of contraptions like flying machines and assorted, I don't know, things that look like weird sketches of torture devices. Yeah. And I can think of no one better to test them than the great Gonzo. Oh, that's a good one. I would bring, uh, I would bring Fosse Bear because I think you'd just be fun company. Yeah. He's just a sweet, sweet, funny bear. Yeah. And oh, the puns he could come up with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Him trying to entertain great painters and, and <laughs> who do you think would get a kick out of Fozzie? Michelangelo would hate him. Yeah. He would absolutely hate him. I am trying to work. <laughs> I think Leonardo da Vinci would be interested. Yeah. He'd dig him. Oh, right. also, you have to bring the, the, uh, figures of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with you. <laughs> <laughs> this was you. Dude, I did sword? when I when I went uh when I went to Italy for the first time, mm-hmm. I uh I I I I took a Ninja Turtle tour of one of the art museums yeah. and I went and I found all of the works by Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo and Donatello. <laughs> by the way, Donatello, yeah, the grooviest out of all of them. Oh, really? His stuff looks like it was made in like the 1920s. Well, he does machines, that's probably why. There you go. Yeah, his stuff looks like like a, a Donatello from the Renaissance looks like a Gaudi from the early 20th century. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, there you go. Folks, we settled this one. It seemed impossible, and yet we did it. That's right. That's what we do here. But we know that there are more topics out there, and we need you to suggest them to us, and you can do that by... You can visit us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets, or check out the Maximum Fun subreddit, or... Email us at we got this podcast at gmail.com or go to our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash we got this podcast. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus, graphic designer Uri Kelman, and QA engineer Jen Alba. And thanks, of course, to our musicians, Jonathan Dinerstein and Mike Furman for our score and theme song, respectively. And thanks to you, our listeners, for giving us a chance to yeah hang out and talk about fun whimsical outlandish things i hope this gets your brains going and your brains are awesome and i can't wait to see what thoughts you have on this topic thank you thank you thank you people of the world for hal lublin i'm mark gagliardi for mark gagliardi i'm hal lublin and don't worry everybody we got this we got this maximumfun.org comedy and culture artist owned audience supported